this is Pastor Julie Jenkins with Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls or boundaries, a threefold ministry. Number one, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Two, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And three, to receive healing in their mind, spirit, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. Well, the word for this week is how Christ has delivered us from darkness and conveyed us into his kingdom. This has already happened through that relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He saved you, redeemed you, and set you apart. He's taken you out of the darkness of alcohol, drugs, um, any kind of life controlling problem, anxiety, fear, depression. He has already accomplished that on the cross for us. And we need to trust in him for that to be manifested in our lives. And he will manifest it because that's the very thing he promised to do through his scripture. So I'm going to take you to Colossians, the first chapter. And I'm going to start with verse 2. It says, To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, who are in Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, which you heard before in the truth of the gospel. I'm going to stop there and talk about the hope that we have laid up for us in heaven. Jesus is there at the right hand of the Father positionally. Of course, God fills the whole universe, but that's where he is. He's, he is directing it. He is our great high priest of Hebrews. Verse 6, which has come to you as it is also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God. And I want to go to um, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and all patience and long suffering, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints alike. Now, doesn't that blow your mind that we have been qualified to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints alike? That God has strengthened us and he has mysteries that he wants to reveal to us. His glorious power is available to us so we can go on beyond just being delivered from what the chains of darkness of the past into the new life in Christ. We can go forward producing fruit. And that's what he wants most of all. And in verse 13, it spells it out very clearly in Colossians 1.13. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Talking about Jesus, verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Wow, what an amazing thing. Um, message Paul had by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is in our Holy Bible, which is the Word of God. So in him we have redemption through his blood. He's delivered us from darkness and conveyed us into his Son. 
By him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible or invisible, were the thrones, dominions, all principalities, all things were created through him and for him. And this is so powerful and beyond anything we can comprehend almost. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and the body of Christ. Um, he is Alpha and Omega, and in him all things consist. He has qualified us to be, the Father God has called us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints of light. Verse 12 again. So God is the one who has qualified us. And Paul wanted their hearts to be encouraged and knit together in love in verse Colossians 2, 2, and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of the understanding to the knowledge and the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. He goes on to say in, in verse 5, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order in the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you therefore have received Christ, Jesus, so walk in him, being rooted in him and established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. Verse 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Jesus has all we need, Christ has all we need to attain to what God has for us. God says, there shall be no other gods before me. So we're to set our minds off of uh, the traditions of men and basic principles of the world and, and empty deceit through so-called philosophy and to set our minds on him. And verse Colossians 2.10 says, And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We need to realize what we have in God, that we are complete in Jesus Christ, who is the head of all principality or power. And I want to go to a part of Colossians that I quote quite a bit, but I want to cover it again. It says Colossians 3, 1 through uh, 4. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not things on the earth, for you have died and your life was hid with Christ in God. With Christ who is our life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. So let's look at, at the kind of glory we have coming The Bible talks about this glory we have in heaven. First Thessalonian, First Thessalonians four sixteen through eighteen talks about the rapture of the church. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall. Always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. So we need to look again to God, who is our Savior through Jesus. How he saved us and made us complete in Christ. How he redeemed us and called us by name and the home we have laid up for us in heaven. For us. Because whether he comes to get us tomorrow or at the rapture, we, it says to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. And there is only one mediator between man and God, the man Jesus Christ. Then 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 5, it talks about that. It says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you. For your, you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. 
that you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. That's, again, we're being conveyed from the kingdom of darkness into Christ's kingdom is what God's talking about there through the Apostle Paul. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of night or of darkness. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 again. So this isn't to overtake us like a thief. We see all the, the signs of Jesus' soon return. And Jesus doesn't want us to be concerned about that. He said in John 14, uh, 1 through 6, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I'd go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas, his disciple, says, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus made it very clear in verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is our way to our heavenly home. He made the way for God to connect with us and for us to connect with God again by paying for our sins on the cross, paying for any addiction, fear, problem, anxiety. That's already paid for and atoned for. So we have to walk in that new life we have through Christ Jesus. Revelation 21, 1 through 7 talks about the beauty of heaven. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was also no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he says in verse 5, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said to me, um, verse 6, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So Jesus talked also about that living water that we have in us, which is the Holy Spirit, that relationship we have in him. And he'll wipe away all our tears. Isn't that wonderful? There'll be no more pain, sorrow, or crying. He will take care of that. And <clears throat> he has a place for us in heaven. So I want you to keep that in mind this week, that God loves you. He's called you by name. You are his. In him all things consist in the universe. And he has a plan for your life. He wants to deliver you day by day. And he loves you. So let me pray for you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you bless them by the power of your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who saved us, who redeemed us, paid for our sins on the cross, who ascended back to you after he rose from the dead on the third day, and that he is coming back soon to get us. Lord, we thank you for the victory we have in you, and we thank you for the healing that you have, that you heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. In Jesus' name, amen. We have some people we'd like to thank. We would like to thank Mark Yale of Ormond Beach, Florida, our Faith Foundation partners and viewers like you for making these programs possible. If you need help or prayer, please give me a call at 217-617-5577. That's 217 617 5577. 
please visit our website at addictionfreeinchrist.com and you can also check out our YouTube channel. So thank you. God bless you and have a blessed week in Jesus name. Amen.